Hello, thanks for coming back. Here's the continuation and final part of my story. There I was, in that dark, cold room, more scared than I had ever been in my life. My heart was beating so fast. I remembered stories I'd heard from other girls. They said sometimes a girl would go with a man and never come back. I thought maybe it was my turn. Maybe I was the one who wouldn't return. But I didn't want to give up. I started to pray harder than I ever had before. Mr. Dan and Auntie Bimpy were chanting strange words and it felt like the walls were closing in on me. I closed my eyes and prayed, asking for strength, asking for a way out. Then, suddenly, I felt something strong inside me. It was like a power I had never felt before. I opened my eyes, and with all the strength I had, I stood up. The men were holding me down, but I broke free from their grip. I didn't even think. I just ran. I didn't stop, not even when Auntie Bimpy tried to block my way. I pushed her aside and dashed out of that house as fast as I could. The night was cold and the darkness was thick, but I didn't care. I just kept running. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what would happen next, but I knew one thing. I was free and I wasn't going to stop. I kept running, my feet hitting the ground hard my breath coming out in short, quick bursts. The cold air stung my skin and my heart pounded in my chest, but I just kept going. I ran into the night, away from the darkness, away from the fear and into the unknown. I ran until my legs couldn't carry me anymore. My body was tired and my heart was heavy with fear. I found a clear spot on the ground and collapsed there, too exhausted to move. The night was so cold and I had no shoes, no proper clothes to keep me warm. I tried to sleep on the street, but my mind was racing and the fear kept me awake. As I lay there on the cold, hard street trying to rest, I suddenly felt a touch. It startled me and I woke up, scared and confused. Standing over me was a tall, handsome man. My heart raced. I thought he might be one of the men from the dark room and fear gripped me all over again. I tried to run, but his grip was strong. I cried out, pleading with him, please don't hurt me. I was so scared, so tired of running. But then something surprising happened. The man gently covered my mouth, not to harm me, but to calm me down. Shh. It's okay, he said in a calm voice. I'm not going to hurt you. His words were soft and there was kindness in his eyes that made me stop struggling. He asked me, what are you doing out here alone on the street? I was trembling, but somehow I managed to tell him what had happened to me about the dark room, Auntie Bimpy and my desperate escape. To my surprise, the man didn't look angry or upset. Instead, he told me to get up. You're lying in front of my house. My security man told me there was a girl outside, so I came to see. He said, I was shocked. I had no idea where I had ended up. The man then asked me to come inside, to get warm and rest. I was scared but something in me believed he was telling the truth. So I followed him. His house was big and beautiful. And as I stepped inside, I felt a small sense of safety for the first time in a long while. Everything inside was so clean and bright, but I was still shaking, not sure what would happen next. I didn't know if I could trust him, but I had nowhere else to go. He showed me to a lovely room, much nicer than anything I had ever seen. You can clean up here, he said gently. Then, get some rest. You're safe now. He even brought me food, a warm meal that made my stomach growl with hunger. 
I was so overwhelmed by his kindness that I didn't know what to say. No one had been this kind to me in so long. I wanted to thank him, but the words got stuck in my throat. Instead, I just nodded and tried to hold back the tears. That night, for the first time in what felt like forever, I slept in a warm bed. The soft blankets wrapped around me, and I felt safe, like nothing could hurt me anymore. It was a feeling I hadn't known in a long while, and it made me feel small and fragile. But when morning came, the fear crept back in. I woke up early, still scared, because I didn't really know who this man was. I wondered what he wanted from me, why he was helping me. My mind raced with questions, and my heart was still heavy with doubt. But for now, I was safe, and that was enough. The next morning, the man came to see me. This time, he introduced himself properly. My name is Kuti. I felt a little more at ease. I told him my name was Tabitha, and he smiled, saying it was a beautiful name. Then, he asked me a question that made my heart skip a beat. What brought you to that dark room last night? He asked gently. I hesitated at first, but then I began to tell him my story. I told him about the fire that took my parents, about Auntie Bimpe's promises, and how everything had gone so wrong. But I kept one thing a secret. I didn't tell him about my life as a prostitute. I was too afraid. What? if he found out and sent me away. I couldn't bear the thought of losing this small chance at a better life. But little did I know that keeping this secret would be what would make me cross paths with Auntie Bimpe again, and this time for the worse. As I spoke, I watched his face closely, trying to see if he would judge me. But he just listened and I could see that he was moved by what I had been through. When I finished, he looked at me with kind eyes and said, You've been through so much, Tabitha. No one should have to go through what you did. His words brought tears to my eyes, but I quickly blinked them away. Then, to my surprise, he offered me a job as a maid in his home. He explained that his wife and children weren't living with him in the city at that time and he needed someone to help with the chores. I was so happy that I accepted without thinking twice. I didn't care about the work. I was just grateful for the chance to stay in a safe place. But that wasn't all. You came to the city for an education, didn't you? He asked. I'll make sure you get it. Mr. Kuti promised to enroll me in school which was the reason I had come to the city in the first place. When he said that, I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I was so overjoyed that I jumped up and hugged him, feeling hope fill my heart for the first time in a long while. I finally felt like my life was starting to turn around, like maybe things would get better from now on. But deep down, I didn't realize that keeping my past a secret would cause problems later on. For now, though, I was just happy to have a new beginning. The next day, I woke up early, even before the sun had fully risen. I wanted to show Mr. Kuti that I was grateful for everything he was doing for me. I quickly completed all the house chores, sweeping, mopping, and making sure everything was spotless before Mr. Kuti even woke up. When he came downstairs and saw the work I had done, he smiled and said, You've done well, Tabitha. His words made me feel so proud. After breakfast, he told me to get ready, and I felt a flutter of excitement in my chest. He took me to a big school, the kind I had only ever dreamed of. The building was grand and beautiful. And as we walked through the gates, I could see bright, eager students all around. They were dressed in neat uniforms, their faces full of hope and excitement for the future. 
Mr. Kuti spoke with the school administrators, and before I knew it, I was officially enrolled. I couldn't believe it, me, Tabitha, in the best school in town. It felt like a dream come true. I was already 18, so I was the oldest in my class. At first, I worried that the other students might laugh at me or think I didn't belong. But I didn't let that stop me. I was determined to make the most of this opportunity. Every day, I worked hard, studying late into the night and doing my best to catch up. The subjects were challenging and there were times when I felt overwhelmed, but I pushed through. Day by day, I got better and better. The teachers were kind and they encouraged me which made me want to try even harder. Being in that school was like a fresh start for me. I was no longer just the girl with a troubled past. I was a student with dreams and a future ahead of me. And with each passing day, I started to believe that maybe, just maybe, I could build a new life for myself. One day, everything changed again. Mr. Kuti's wife and their only child returned to the city. When they arrived, I was nervous. I didn't know what to expect or how they would react to me living in their home. But Mr. Kuti quickly put my fears to rest. He introduced me to Mrs. Kuti and she greeted me with a warm smile. Hello, Tabitha, she said kindly, her voice gentle. I could tell right away that she was a kind person. I felt a little more at ease, though there was still a part of me that was afraid she might see me as just a maid. To show my gratitude, I decided to cook a nice meal for the family. I carefully prepared the dishes, wanting everything to be perfect. When the food was ready, I set the table and we all sat down together to eat. It was the first time in a long while that I felt like I was part of something good something normal. Mrs. Kuti and their child treated me not as a maid, but almost like a family member. They spoke to me with respect and kindness, and it made my heart swell with gratitude. I continued with my schooling and helped around the house, and for the first time in years, I felt truly content. I was so thankful for this new life, where I could focus on my studies and live in peace. But as much as I wanted to believe that things would stay this way, something happened that would turn my world upside down once again. It was like a dark cloud suddenly appeared, reminding me that my past was never far behind, and soon I would face a challenge that I never saw coming, one that would test everything I had built in this new life. It was a bright, happy day their daughter's birthday. The house was buzzing with excitement as Mr. and Mrs. Kuti prepared for the big party. They invited many friends and family members, and the whole place was filled with laughter, joy, and the sound of children playing. I was busy helping with the preparations, making sure everything was perfect for the celebration. As guests started to arrive, I worked quietly in the background, arranging food, tidying up, and making sure everyone was comfortable. I was happy to see the smiles on their faces and to hear the cheerful chatter that filled the rooms. It felt like a perfect day, one that I wanted to remember. But then, as I was carrying a tray of drinks, I saw her, Auntie Bimpe. She was standing in the middle of the room, laughing and chatting with the other guests. My heart stopped, and the tray almost slipped from my hands. How could this be? Auntie Bimpe, the very person I had run from, was here, in the same house where I had found safety. I quickly realized that she was a friend of Mrs. Kuti and had been invited to the party. My heart sank deep into my chest. I knew in that moment that my secret was no longer safe. If Auntie Bimpe recognized me, everything could fall apart. The new life I had built could be destroyed in an instant. Panic set in, 
and I tried to stay out of sight. I thought if I could just sneak out of the party, maybe she wouldn't see me. Maybe I could escape before she had the chance to expose me. But as I was slipping toward the door, I felt a hand grab my wrist. I turned around and there she was, Auntie Bimpe, pulling me aside where no one could see us. She looked at me with a knowing smile, her eyes full of mischief. Where do you think you're going, Tabitha? She whispered, her voice dripping with menace. My heart pounded in my chest and I knew I was trapped. There was no running away this time. I was caught and I had no idea what would happen next. Auntie Bimpy leaned in close, her grip tightening on my wrist. Don't worry, Tabitha, she whispered, her voice low and dangerous. Your secrets are safe with me for now. My heart raced as I listened, fear creeping into every part of my body. She told me that she had already spoken to Mrs. Kuti about me. Your new madam had nothing but nice things to say about you, she said with a sly smile. She thinks you're just a hard-working, sweet girl who's been helping around the house. Isn't that lovely? But then her tone changed, the smile faded, and her eyes turned cold. But, Tabitha, there's something you need to do for me if you want it to stay that way. My stomach twisted as I realized what was coming. I knew Auntie Bimpy too well to think she'd keep my secret out of kindness. She asked me a question that took me by surprise. Have you ever seen me with a husband or any children? I shook my head, confused and scared unsure of where this was going. I had never seen Auntie Bimpy with a family of her own. She was always alone, always looking out for herself. Then she dropped a bombshell. Mrs. Kuti's daughter isn't Mr. Kuti's child, she hissed. She'd been having extramarital affairs and that child belongs to another man. My eyes widened in shock. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. How could this be true? My mind raced, trying to process this new information. But Auntie Bimpe wasn't done. She leaned in closer and said, I want you to help me expose Mrs. Kuti. If you do, I'll make sure Mr. Kuti knows the truth, and then he'll be mine. But if you refuse... She paused, letting her threat hang in the air. She didn't need to finish the sentence. I knew what she meant. I'll tell everyone about your past. I'll make sure Mr. Kuti knows you were a prostitute and everything you've built here will be ruined. She finished with an intimidating look. I felt like the ground was crumbling beneath me. Auntie Bimpe had me trapped and she knew it. I was terrified, my mind spinning with the impossible choice she had given me. If I did what she asked, I would be betraying the family that had treated me so well. But if I refused, she would expose me and destroy the new life I had worked so hard to build. I looked at Auntie Bimpy, seeing the cold determination in her eyes. She knew exactly what she was doing, and she knew I had no choice but to listen. I was caught in a web of lies and secrets, and I had no idea how to escape. I was torn. It felt like I was trapped between two impossible choices. If I kept quiet, Auntie Bimpe could destroy everything by revealing my past. But if I exposed Mrs. Kuti, I would be betraying the very family that had welcomed me and treated me so kindly. The thought of hurting them made my heart ache. I spent the next few days thinking about it over and over again. My mind was a whirlwind of fear and doubt. I was now in school, working towards my dream of becoming a doctor. It was the future I had always wanted, the reason I had come to the city in the first place. But I knew that without Mr. Kuti's support, all of that could be taken away in an instant. 
The more I thought about it, the more I realized how much was at stake. I had finally found a bit of happiness, a bit of hope. I couldn't bear the thought of losing it all. I tried to imagine what my life would be like if Auntie Bimpe exposed me. Being cast out, losing my education, and being thrown back into the darkness I had fought so hard to escape. In the end, I decided to do what Auntie Bimpe wanted. It wasn't an easy decision, and it didn't feel right, but I convinced myself that Mr. Kuti deserved to know the truth. If Mrs. Kuti was hiding such a big secret, then maybe exposing it would protect him and secure my future. I told myself that I was doing the right thing, that I was helping Mr. Kuti, but deep down, I knew I was also trying to save myself. The fear of losing everything was too strong, and it pushed me to make a choice I wasn't proud of. As I prepared to follow through, with Auntie Bimpy's plan, I couldn't shake the feeling of dread that hung over me. I knew that what I was about to do could change everything for Mr. Kuti, for his family, and for me. I just hoped that in the end, it would be worth it. That night, after the party was over and the guests had left, I found Mr. Kuti in his study. My heart pounded in my chest as I approached him. Mr. Kuti, I said softly, my voice trembling. Can I speak with you privately? He looked up at me with a gentle smile, not knowing the storm that was brewing inside me. Of course, Tabitha, he replied, his tone kind and welcoming. I took a deep breath, trying to steady my nerves. I knew there was no turning back once I spoke the words. My entire future hung in the balance, and I could only hope that I was making the right choice. When we were alone in his study, my hands trembled as I stood before Mr. Kuti. The words I was about to say felt like they were stuck in my throat, but I knew I had to speak them. I couldn't keep this inside any longer. Mr. Kuti, I began, my voice shaky, there's something you need to know. He looked at me with a mixture of curiosity and worry. I could see he wasn't prepared for what was coming. It's about Mrs. Kuti, I continued, struggling to find the right words. She's been... She's been seeing someone else. The daughter you love so much. She isn't yours. The words hung in the air like a heavy cloud. I saw the shock in his eyes, the way his face fell as the truth sank in. He didn't speak for what felt like an eternity. Then, slowly, tears began to fill his eyes. Why are you telling me this, Tabitha? He asked, his voice breaking. The pain in his voice was almost unbearable. I swallowed hard, knowing that I had to be completely honest. Auntie Bimpe asked me to tell you, I admitted, but not because she cares about you. She wants you for herself. She wants to destroy your family so she can take your wife's place. But I couldn't let that happen. I couldn't let someone as evil as Auntie Bimpe come between you and the people you love. Mr. Kuti looked at me and I could see the betrayal and heartbreak in his eyes. It tore me apart to see him like that, but I knew I had to continue. I'm telling you this because I believe you deserve to know the truth, even though it hurts. I couldn't keep this secret any longer. Finally, after what felt like hours, I felt the burden lift off my shoulders. For so long, I had been carrying the weight of secrets and lies, but now I had told the truth. However, there's still one thing left. I haven't still told him about my past life as a prostitute. Then, at that moment, I summoned the courage to finally tell him, knowing fully well that if that is out, I'll be totally free from Auntie Bimpe and never have to worry about her threat anymore. But just as I was about to confess the part of my past that had been weighing on me the most, 
there was a sudden knock on the door. My heart skipped a beat and I froze. The door creaked open and there stood Mrs. Kuti. The tension in the room was palpable. Mrs. Kuti looked at both of us, sensing that something serious was going on. Is everything okay? She asked, her voice uncertain. Mr. Kuti's face hardened and he looked away from me, anger and hurt clearly etched on his features. We'll talk later, he said sharply, brushing past her as he left the room. He didn't look back. I was left standing there, my heart heavy with the secret I hadn't been able to reveal. The moment was gone, and I knew I had missed my chance. The truth I had been so close to sharing was still buried inside me, and I wasn't sure when or if I'd ever find the courage to bring it up again. As I stood there alone, I realized that the weight of my past was something I couldn't escape, no matter how much I tried. The secret was still mine to bear, and the uncertainty of what would happen next loomed over me like a dark cloud. The truth hadn't set me free, not yet at least, and I feared the consequences that would come when it finally did. The next morning, the house was unusually quiet. The air was thick with tension, and I knew that the moment I had dreaded was about to unfold. Mr. Kuti had barely spoken a word since my confession the night before, but I could see the determination in his eyes. He was going to confront his wife. I kept to myself, trying to stay out of sight, as Mr. Kuti called Mrs. Kuti into the living room. I could hear the tremor in his voice as he spoke, and my heart ached for him. Is it true? he asked, his voice filled with a mixture of pain and anger. Is our daughter not mine? Mrs. Kuti's face paled, and I could see the fear in her eyes. She stammered, trying to find the words to defend herself, but the truth was already out. She couldn't deny it. Slowly, she nodded, tears streaming down her face. Why? Mr. Kuti's voice cracked, and I could feel his heart breaking from where I stood. Why didn't you tell me? Why did you lie to me all these years? Mrs. Kuti sobbed, trying to explain, but her words were lost in the weight of her betrayal. Mr. Kuti shook his head, the pain too much for him to bear. I can't do this, he said finally, his voice barely above a whisper. Pack your things and leave. I can't have you here anymore. Mrs. Kuti pleaded with him, begging for another chance, but his mind was made up. He couldn't look at her the same way, couldn't live with the betrayal that had shattered his world. I watched from a distance as Mrs. Kuti packed her things, her sobs echoing through the house. Guilt gnawed at me. I had played a part in breaking up their family, and the weight of that responsibility was heavy on my heart. But I knew, deep down, that I had done the right thing. Mr. Kuti had given me a chance at a new life when I had nowhere else to turn. He had treated me with kindness and respect, something I hadn't known in so long. I couldn't let someone like Auntie Bimpe destroy his life and take advantage of his goodness. As Mrs. Kuti left the house, I felt a deep sadness, but also a sense of resolve. The truth had caused pain, but it had also brought a sense of clarity. Mr. Kuti deserved honesty, and now, despite the heartbreak, he had it. I knew the road ahead would be difficult for him, and I felt guilty for the role I had played. But I also knew that sometimes, doing the right thing meant making hard choices, even when they hurt. Days passed after Mrs. Kuti left and the atmosphere in the house was heavy with sadness. Mr. Kuti was quieter than usual, and I could see the pain in his eyes every time he looked at the empty spaces where his wife and daughter once were. But amidst all this, something else began to unfold. Auntie Bimpy's plan to take advantage of Mr. Kuti's vulnerability. Auntie Bimpy started coming to the house more often, 
using every excuse she could find to be around. She would dress up in her finest clothes, wearing bright, flashy outfits that she thought would catch Mr. Kuti's eye. She even began cooking meals, trying to show off her domestic skills, as if that would somehow make him forget the pain he was in. She was relentless, always finding reasons to stay longer, offering to help around the house, and trying to make herself indispensable. But no matter what she did, Mr. Kuti paid her no attention. He was polite, as he always was, but his heart was clearly elsewhere, still mourning the loss of his family. I watched all of this with a mix of disgust and relief. Disgust because I knew exactly what Auntie Bimpe was trying to do. She was trying to worm her way into Mr. Kuti's life, thinking she could take the place of his wife. But I also felt relief because it was clear that her efforts were failing. Mr. Kuti wasn't interested in her manipulations. However, on the other hand, I couldn't help but feel the tension building. Auntie Bimpe wasn't the type to give up easily, and I knew that her presence in the house could only mean trouble. As the days passed, I couldn't shake the feeling that something else was coming. Something I wasn't prepared for. The storm I had tried so hard to avoid was now swirling around me and I had no idea where it would take me next. As the days went on, Auntie Bimpy's visits became less frequent and her once confident demeanor started to fade. She could see that her plans were failing and the more she tried to force her way into Mr. Kuti's life, the more she realized that she had lost control of everything. A few months had passed since Mrs. Kuti left and the house had settled into a new, quieter routine. Mr. Kuti had begun to smile again, though it was a small, hesitant smile, and I was glad to see some of the sadness lifting from him. We continued to live and work together, with me balancing my schoolwork and my duties at home. Then, one day, Something happened that I never expected. Mr. Kuti asked me to sit with him in the living room. He seemed nervous, which was unusual for him, and I felt my heart start to race. Tabitha, he began, looking at me with serious eyes. You've been such a blessing in my life. You've helped me through some of the darkest days, and I don't know where I'd be without you. I nodded feeling a warmth in my heart at his words, but I wasn't prepared for what he said next. I've been thinking, he continued, and I want to ask you something important. Will you marry me? I was stunned. The room seemed to spin for a moment as I tried to process his words. Marry him? I had never imagined that he would ask me something like this. My first instinct was to say yes, but then the reality of the situation hit me. What would happen if Auntie Bimpy found out? I could see the sincerity in his eyes, and I knew that he genuinely cared for me, but I also knew that my life was complicated, tangled in secrets and past mistakes. I didn't want to bring trouble into his life and I didn't know if I was ready for such a big commitment. I... I need some time to think about it, I finally managed to say, my voice shaking. Mr. Kuti nodded, understanding in his eyes, and he didn't push me for an answer. For the next few weeks, I couldn't stop thinking about his proposal. I thought about everything that had happened, about the life I had now, and the life I wanted in the future. I thought about Auntie Bimpe and the danger she still posed. But most of all, I thought about Mr. Kuti and how much he meant to me. After much soul-searching, I made my decision. I went to Mr. Kuti and told him that I would marry him, but I had one condition. Nothing would happen between us until I finished my education. 
I needed to focus on my studies and make sure I could stand on my own two feet before taking such a big step. He smiled and agreed without hesitation. I'll wait for you, Tabitha, he said. Take all the time you need. We decided to keep our engagement a secret, even from Auntie Bimpe. The thought of her finding out terrified me, so we told no one. Whenever Auntie Bimpe asked me how things were going with Mr. Kuti, I lied, telling her that he couldn't stop talking about her. It wasn't true, but it kept her from suspecting anything. And so, our relationship remained hidden, known only to the two of us. It was a strange, secretive time, but I felt a deep sense of commitment to Mr. Kuti. I was determined to finish my education, to become the person I had always dreamed of being, and then, when the time was right, to stand beside him as his wife. For now, we kept our love quiet, waiting for the day when we could finally share it with the world. When I finally finished secondary school and was preparing to enter university, Mr. Kuti came to me with a suggestion that made my heart race. He wanted to visit my village, to meet my uncles and aunts, and to formally announce our engagement. The idea of going back home filled me with both excitement and dread. I hadn't been back since I left, and I knew that returning with Mr. Kuti would be a big moment for my family. But at the same time, the thought of facing my past, especially with Auntie Bimpy still lurking in the background, terrified me. What if she found out? What if she decided to ruin everything? Despite my fears, I agreed. I knew it was important, not just for our relationship, but for my future. So, with a mixture of nerves and hope, we made the journey back to my village. When we arrived, my relatives were thrilled to meet Mr. Kuti. He was everything they had hoped for, a rich, kind man who had taken care of me when I needed it most. They welcomed him warmly, with open arms and big smiles. The joy on their faces made my heart swell with pride and happiness. For a moment, it felt like everything was going to be okay. Mr. Kuti expressed his intention to marry me and my uncles and aunts were overjoyed. They praised him for his generosity and kindness and they were eager to give their blessing. But just when I thought everything was going smoothly, one of my uncles said something that sent a chill down my spine. My One of my uncles spoke up, bringing everything to a screeching halt. This is wonderful news, he said. But before we can finalize anything, we must consult Auntie Bimpe. After all, she was the one who took Tabitha to the city. We cannot proceed without her approval. My heart dropped to the floor. Auntie Bimpe, the very person I had hoped to avoid was now being brought into the most important decision of my life. I felt a wave of terror wash over me, knowing that if she was involved, my past would no longer be a secret. She could expose everything in front of my family, in front of Mr. Kuti, and ruin the life I had worked so hard to build. I could barely breathe as my uncle insisted that Auntie Bimpy be summoned to the village the next day. It's only right, he said, that she has a say in this. She was the one who helped Tabitha when she was in need. I knew the truth that Auntie Bimpe had only used me and the other girls for her own gain, but I couldn't bring myself to speak up. The fear of what she might reveal paralyzed me. I could see the happiness on Mr. Kuti's face the pride in my relative's eyes, and I didn't want to shatter that. That night was the longest of my life. I barely slept, my mind racing with thoughts of what would happen when Auntie Bimpy arrived. I imagined her standing in front of my family, telling them about my past, exposing the secrets I had kept hidden for so long. I felt trapped, with no way to escape the disaster that was looming. 
When morning finally arrived, a heavy sense of dread settled over me. I knew what was coming and I felt powerless to stop it. Auntie Bimpe arrived in the village just as expected. As soon as she stepped out of her car and saw me standing beside Mr. Kuti, I could see the fury in her eyes. She knew what I had done and she wasn't going to let me get away with it. The village square was filled with people, my uncles, my aunts, my cousins, and even neighbors who had come to witness the meeting. My heart sank as I realized that this wasn't just a private confrontation, it was going to be a public spectacle. My uncle, who had always been the voice of reason in our family, addressed Auntie Bimpi with respect. Auntie Bimpi, he began, we have gathered here today to discuss the union between Tabitha and Mr. Kuti. We value your opinion, as you were the one who took her to the city and helped her find a new life. Auntie Bimpi let out a deep sigh, as if she were pondering something very serious. Then she stood up slowly and spoke in a voice loud enough for everyone to hear. No, she said, shaking her head, this union cannot happen. I'm against it. There was a murmur of confusion among my relatives, and Mr. Cootie looked puzzled. Why not? he asked, his voice tinged with concern. What's wrong? Auntie Bimpy's eyes narrowed, and she turned to Mr. Cootie with a look of fake sympathy. Do you really know who this girl is? she demanded. Do you know her past? Where she came from? What she used to be? My heart raced as the words I had feared for so long began to spill from her lips. Mr. Kuti glanced at me, concern flickering in his eyes. But before I could say anything, Auntie Bimpy shouted the words I had been dreading. Tabitha, she said, pointing at me, was a prostitute in the city, a common street girl who sold body for money. And now, a responsible man like you wants to marry her? Gasps filled the air and I felt the ground beneath me sway. My relatives, who had been so happy just moments ago, looked at me with shock and disbelief. My uncle's face turned pale and he stared at me as if he couldn't comprehend what he had just heard. Tears welled up in my eyes, but I couldn't cry. I couldn't move. I was frozen in place, every muscle in my body tense as I waited for Mr. Kuti's reaction. This was the moment I had feared the most, the moment when my past would come crashing down around me, destroying everything I had worked so hard to build. Mr. Kuti stood there, silent and still, his expression unreadable. The entire village seemed to be holding its breath waiting to see what he would say, what he would do. And in that silence, I felt more alone than I had ever felt in my entire life. At that moment, it felt like the world had collapsed around me. My heart shattered into a thousand pieces as I saw the shock and disbelief on the faces of my uncles and aunts. They all turned to me, their eyes wide with questions and confusion. Is it true, Tabitha? One of my uncles asked, his voice trembling. I couldn't lie to them. Not now, not anymore. I nodded, my voice barely a whisper. Yes, it's true, I admitted, feeling the weight of my confession pressing down on me. But before I could explain further, Mr. Kuti stood up his presence commanding the attention of everyone in the square. He looked calm, resolute, and I saw a strength in him that I hadn't fully understood before. I already knew, he said, his voice steady and clear. The silence that followed was deafening. Everyone, including Auntie Bimpi, was stunned. I could see the confusion on their faces the way they struggled to understand what was happening. Mr. Kuti turned to my family, his expression gentle but firm. 
Tabitha told me everything, he continued. On the night she revealed the truth about my wife's secret, she also told me about her past. She told me the real story, not the one she first shared with me. And yes, I know she was a prostitute. Auntie Bimpy's mouth hung open, her eyes wide with disbelief. She had thought she held the ultimate weapon to destroy me, but now it had been rendered powerless. Mr. Kuti looked at me then, and I saw nothing but kindness and acceptance in his eyes. But I've accepted her for who she is, he said, his voice filled with conviction. I don't care about her past. What matters to me is who she is now, the person she's become, the strength she's shown, and the honesty with which she's faced her life. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Tears welled up in my eyes, and this time I couldn't hold them back. I had been so afraid, so certain that my past would ruin everything. But here was Mr. Kuti, standing by my side, defending me in front of everyone. Auntie Bimpy was speechless. The power she had wielded over me for so long was gone, and she had nothing left to say. The shock in her eyes slowly turned to frustration, and I could see that she was grappling with the realization that her plan had failed. My uncles and aunts looked at each other, then back at me. The anger and disappointment I had feared were not there. Instead, there was a mixture of confusion and a dawning understanding. One of my aunts stepped forward, her voice soft but firm. Is this true, Tabitha? Did you tell Mr. Kuti everything? I nodded, tears streaming down my face. Yes, I whispered. I told him everything. I didn't want to hide the truth from him. There was a pause, a moment of reflection that seemed to stretch on forever. And then, my uncle, the same one who had insisted on consulting Auntie Bimpy, spoke up. We all have passed, he said quietly, looking at me with a kind, understanding expression. But what matters is how we move forward, how we learn and grow from what we've been through. The relief that washed over me was overwhelming. I had been prepared for the worst, but instead, I found acceptance and understanding. Mr. Kuti's words had changed everything, and now even my family seemed ready to look beyond my past and see the person I had become. Auntie Bimpe, realizing that she had lost, turned away in frustration. She muttered something under her breath, but her power over me was gone. I was no longer afraid of her or her threats. For the first time in a long time, I felt free free from the chains of my past, free from the fear that had haunted me for so long. And as I looked at Mr. Kuti, standing strong beside me, I knew that together we could face whatever challenges lay ahead. The revelation of my past and the truth about Auntie Bimpe sent shockwaves through the village. The villagers, many of whom had trusted Auntie Bimpe with their own daughters, nieces, and cousins, were furious. Whispers of anger and betrayal spread quickly, and soon the village square was filled with people demanding answers. One by one, they came forward, asking me what I knew about Auntie Bimpe's activities in the city. I didn't hold back. I told them everything, how she had lured girls with false promises, how she had trapped them in lives they never wanted, and how she had ruined so many futures. The villagers listened in stunned silence, their faces darkening with every word I spoke. The villagers, filled with anger, confronted Auntie Bimpy, demanding she return their daughters and face justice. The elders decided to hand her over to the police. As I watched her taken away, I felt a mix of relief and sadness. She had chosen a dark path, leading to her own downfall. With Auntie Bimpy gone, the village tension eased. My family, seeing Mr. Kuti's love and respect for me, blessed our union. 
we returned to the city and a new chapter in my life began. No longer haunted by my past, I focused on a future filled with hope. Mr. Kuti supported me as I entered university and after five years of hard work, I achieved my dream of becoming a doctor. Mr. Kuti and I started a family with two beautiful children and our home was filled with love and laughter. The pain of my past faded, replaced by the joy of the life we built together. Every struggle had shaped me into the person I was meant to be. And I finally found peace, knowing I was exactly where I was meant to be. I hope you enjoyed the tale. If so, please like the video, share it with your family and friends, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell for more enchanting tales like this one. Goodbye.